Hi, welcome back to another edition of the Power BI Monthly Digest. My name is Devin Knight, and I'm here with... Matthew Peterson. Matthew with the, Peterson. With the fresh haircut and everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we want to welcome you and join you. Uh, thanks for joining again, of course, for the June edition of the Monthly Digest uh, as we start to cover some of the new features that have come out this month. Uh, a lot of exciting things. A smaller update this month. Smaller I give them a little update. break since they had a, two updates in one month uh, recently. But uh, there's, some, there's still some good things here that are worth uh, highlighting, I think. Right? I, I believe so. I think there's some really good things that even some things I had not been using in any of my reports that now I'm going to start using for sure. Awesome. So let's jump right into it. So I think the first thing that uh, we're going to be looking at, Matt, has to do with the mobile layout capabilities in the desktop tool, right? Yeah. They're working on updating, making it more friendly for the mobile people to create it in the Power BI desktop and then publish. Um, we've got some new capabilities where we can start putting visuals on top of other visuals. Yeah. Uh, and just kind of a little bit more usability. But they said this is definitely, they're working on it. They want to make more improvements. And so if you have any uh, ideas for them, hit them up in the community blog and they would love to listen. Awesome. Well, let's take a quick peek at what uh, they've updated here. So we just have a report page and you can make a mobile view for any report page that you have. And the way that we make a mobile view is if we click on the view ribbon and we come up to our mobile layout. And by the way, this has been here before. There's just some enhancements to this, Exactly. Right? Yeah. This has been here before. And so what we can do in, is when you want a visual on your mobile is what we're going to do is we're just going to drag over our visual. So nothing new here and we can change it around. And if you notice, for those of you who've used mobile in the past, you start the, the checkered boxes are a little bit more detailed the, than previous. Uh, and so I'm just going to add two visuals here. And right now, nothing is really different from what we have seen in the past. But here's where something comes in. You can now have a visual uh, kind of basically hover over another visual, so to speak. So if I take our, our tree map here, I can move it up and have it over top the other one. So this is where you would come in with your design capabilities of how you want things to look, but previously that was never an option. It would you be would, kind of locked to the screen. Everything right? was <laughs> locked in, but now you have the ability to, to do that. Uh, another thing that happens here is if we look over here on the right, you see that we have the, the, the eye icon um, by... Uh, on my visual and also this image. And what that means is currently in my selection pane, if I go back to the desktop layout, uh, in the selection pane, these are all visible. But let's say I take those two visuals I just put on the mobile layout, my uh, column chart and tree map, I'm gonna come over here and let's get, I'm gonna get rid of, I'm gonna not get rid of them, I'm going to hide them. And now let's go back to mobile layout and see what happens. They're no longer here. They're there, but we have now hidden them. So that's just something to keep in mind as you're doing this, when you make a change on the report page in terms of selections of what's visible or not, it's going to affect the mobile layout uh, as well. And one last thing I just want to mention, if you didn't know about that capability, you can put images as well into your mobile layout. And with this, now with that hover ability, we can have visuals hover over an image if we want to. So again, you would make this fit your needs that you wanted to. Yeah, you can kind of simulate a background or something like here. Yeah, yeah. company logos, those are always great uses for them. I just chose to use the world this time. Awesome. All right, good deal. So uh, that's a good one, a nice little feature. It's been there, but some additions to it, some enhancements to make it work a little bit even better than what we had before in the past. Another yeah. uh, thing that uh, we have had in the past for the past couple of months, but now is made generally available, is the automatic page refresh capability. Uh, that's now generally available. That includes um, some of the things that we've been covering over the last couple of months. Um, I know one of the things that we mentioned in regards to that, there's some premium only capabilities, but you can do some of it in the desktop as well. Yeah, so don't get fooled into it because uh, you have that auto page refresh with that, that light query that's working on in the background, uh, but that is only available for premium customers once you publish to the service. Yeah, so yeah, good point. Don't get fooled by that. You could, If you use it in the desktop tool, just note you may not have it available later if you are just a pro user. So yeah. Yeah. good point there. Um, so the next thing though, on top of that, so we've covered, by the way, if you want to learn more about the automatic page refresh, we, I think we've covered that the last two months, two months and go two months back. So what was that May, April, that's where we go really into detail. Last month, we just did a little quick update on it. Yeah. So definitely take a look at that. If you're interested in that, uh, the next thing that we're going to be looking at though, is a, a gen another thing that's being made generally available, but there's also, there's also made some changes to it, right? The hierarchy. Hierarchy slicer. I know, that's a, such a hard word. Hierarchical <laughs> slicer. I don't know. That's the word I always hate saying uh, in classes, yeah. too. I don't think I say it right. But yeah, they've, they've made some changes to it, uh, some good uh, visualization changes to it for the end user to make it just a little bit more, um, you know, more palatable to the eyes, I guess. All right. Well, let's take a look at that. So with our hierarchical slicer, this is where you would, if you have some kind of hierarchy that you have created, and we have created one uh, in our date table, we have what we call a date drill down over here. So I'm going to add a 
slicer, and I'm going to pick my date drill down. And so let's just take a look at how this operates over here. And so if I click on the Chevron 2005, now I go down into all the quarters of 2005. I can then go into the first quarter of 2005 if I wanted to as well. And I can pick whichever months I want from there. So you have a lot of capabilities of how things will in turn be filtered. So I'm going to get rid of that for now. So that's always been there, but here is what has been added for this month's feature. We can do some formatting with this. So with your slicer select, I'm going to come over to the format pane. And what we're going to do is under uh, the items, what we have, I'll get down a little bit further. You no longer have to stay with the standard Chevron icons. You can use a plus minus or you can use a carrot as well. So I'm going to come over here, show you what the carrot looks like. We see uh -huh. the carrot and we can do the plus minus as well. So that's great. Uh, the next thing that they added is when we do the drop down here with this indentation, we can change how far out the indentation is. So back over in our formatting with the step layout indentation, the bigger the number, come right back on over the more it comes out. So you now have that capability. So you can see more of a separation. So if you've got a lot of real estate on your page, I suggest, you know, making the indentation a little bit larger. But if you are, you know, then the real estate is not as much for you, then we can definitely make it into a smaller one. And the last thing, and this one I'll zoom out for, that what they have added the capability is that when we increase the text size of the slicer, now the icons actually adjust their size as well. So I'm going to change this up. As you see, I'm making it bigger. These as well, once it catches up, the icons adjust with them accordingly. Okay, nice. So that's yes, a nice previously it didn't do there. that, right? Right. It, just, yeah. it stayed that, that standard. I think it was 10-point <laughs> uh, font there. Gotcha. Cool. Well, we got a couple other announcements as far as things that have become generally available. Uh, we've talked now for several months, I think, also about the modern ribbon experience. So the uh, you'll hear Microsoft use the ribbon. Some people in normal life probably call them tabs up top, things like that. The, the, the menu options that you have at the top of your, your program here, in this case, uh, Power BI, is called a, a ribbon. And you'll hear it called Office Ribbon and uh, different Office products. Uh, but in Power BI, it's called a ribbon as well. And the changes they've made with that over the last couple months are now generally available as well. So that'll be kind of your new way of seeing things if you're used to the old way. Yeah. And so if you haven't it. updated your uh, version of desktop in a while, it, 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 it's in your face, by the way, like what has happened? But yeah. now it's generally available. Yeah. Another thing that's being uh, kind of moved along and more things are happening with it is the feature tables feature that we talked we talked about last month. We didn't really mm -hmm. get too deep into it because you actually had to have a special version of uh, Excel to show it. But there's a, a newer feature that uh, was released last month that's uh, allowing you to take Power BI tables, make them feature tables. And we did show you how you can turn that capability on mm -hmm. in Power BI. Uh, and how you can now actually take Power BI tables and use them inside of Excel. So we talked a little bit about that uh, last month. The new thing that's come out this month, which we'll just talk about because uh, there's not really anything new to show, is the that row level security if you have row level security enabled on your data model that now is inherited into excel as well so if you had set up where your salespeople that might be connecting a customer table inside power bi are only allowed to see their customers that will continue to be the case as they use those feature tables in excel so oh, good, cool. that's a good update then. good update there yep uh, the next one we will show it has to do with the line uh line chart so line chart's been around forever yeah. But they have made some small adjustments to it, some small things that are nice. So we're, we're, uh, what are they making, first of all? Let's start there. It's again, so previously we could always change that color of the line chart. But that was pretty much all you could do with it in terms of just the line itself. But now we can actually highlight some of the data points of where that, that X, Y point, so to speak, actually is. And okay. we can change the actual colors so that way we can kind of draw the attention of our, our end user to certain spots in our data. Awesome. Well, let's take a quick peek at that. Yeah. So <clears throat> with this, is you, you start off with your basic line chart. And the way that we are going to do this is we have to go back into our formatting. And under data colors, this is where you would go. And this is all you would see previous to this update is that you could change the color. So I could change sales amount to this darker blue and it changes the line. And the only way you would actually see your data points is when we hovered over, we could see basically like our tooltip and we get that little dot. But now if we want those dots to actually show up for our end user without them hovering over it, it's really quick fix. So in our data colors, we click on show all. And now for every category in our series, which our categories are all the uh, countries, is we can change the color. So let's say I want every other one to be a certain color. So I'll change Australia. We'll go with that pink up in the right. We'll go Germany, same thing. 
And now let's go take a look at what our data looks like. Okay. So now we can actually see. So I didn't change the actual colors of United States. Notice I didn't make a new selection change. And because of that, we don't actually see a dot. So if you want a dot to show, you have to change the actual color. Yeah, if you said as this, if you were to reset it as the same color, would it appear? Or how does that work? I'm yep. curious. So if we come back in here, and now I change it to that blue color that I had, so different color, now we actually have a dot. I gotcha. Interesting. And if you go, oh, I don't really like how I did any of this, you can revert back to all, revert to the default, and you can get rid of them. Oh, nice. Simple so, enough. Simple right. enough, visually pleasing. Um, you know, and that's like, as you made, I remember making line charts in school, the dots in order to actually make the lines. So, right, absolutely. You know, that's how they always look to me. You so start I, with the dots and then, and then you, you make the, the line. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Pre-computers. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. So uh, really, that's it outside of one final mention here. And you know what? We'll probably actually, if you don't mind, Matt, let's go ahead and flip back to the screen for this one. And I'll have you zoom in on the area here. Yeah. If you could zoom in on the top left, and I'll just kind of talk about this, is with your... Uh, live connections. So for those of you that use live connections to analysis services tabular or multidimensional, in the past, whenever you would connect to those various data models, you would only have the ability to really see the, the data visualization, the top section there that Matt has, is highlighting. Uh, that's all you could really do. You would be able to view and build uh, report visuals on top of your data model. But the recent update that's in preview right now is for live connections, you'll now also see the diagram or the model view that Matt's highlighting here. So you'll have the ability, and now of course, if you need to make changes to your model, that's something you would go back to analysis services to do, but you can now at least see the diagram view here. You can make uh, some adjustments as far as how the diagram view looks, but you're able to see kind of the, the relationships that you have defined from your tabular or multidimensional models here within inside of the model view. You still don't see the data view necessarily, so you, you don't have, and by the way, this direct query has had this for a little bit now. They're now uh, bringing this over to Live Connect as well. So another nice little small ad, but that's something that people have uh, requested. It, you even mentioned it in the updates here that it was a highly requested feature to be able to see at least the model view while you're connecting to a live connection, and uh, you now have that capability. Yeah. So there you go. So short update for you this month. Hopefully it's still some things that you uh, definitely found some interest in. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, comment below. Let us know what was your favorite thing that was released this month. And uh, we'd, we'd love to interact with you there and learn more about what you were interested in. And, of course, as always, make sure you subscribe. Continue to get some of these videos from us as we continue to share updates that we find most interesting in the Power BI desktop. And uh, we look forward to sharing with you next month as well. Yes, sir. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, again, this is Matt Peterson. I'm Devin Knight. We look forward to chatting with you soon uh, next time. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.